Hi guys, Eddie here. Happy Saturday. Today we're going to be discussing the real reasons for the stock market rally. And this is as a response of, you know, me getting loads of questions, you know, you know, the economy is meant to be in such a bad shape as a result of the coronavirus. We're seeing huge amounts of riots in the streets. Uh, obviously, this worldwide pandemic that shut down every major global economy in the world. Millions are unemployed, and yet markets are approaching uh, the highest levels ever, uh, with the NASDAQ uh, making all-time highs. You know, when the stock market is booming, we're meant to think the economy is booming. Um, but what what is the stock market measuring um, if the economy is in such a bad shape? Does this mo stock market really uh, reflect reality when the world's up in flames? Um, so today, uh, we're going to be discussing um, some of the economic indicators, but also the real reason at the end of the video why I believe that um, you know stock markets are rallying uh, at a time of unprecedented, my favourite word, uh, economic crises um, and civil unrest that is you know destroying the streets of America. Um, we're seeing it in London. You know why is the market so bullish about? Um, the future prospects and why have we seen such a rapid recovery um, in markets um, and actually not the economy. Um, so to put it into perspective, uh, as you can see by this chart, this is the US GDP and this shrank by uh, 5% uh, in the first quarter of 2020. Um, and this is the biggest drop in GDP uh, since the last quarter uh, of 2008, um, as the, basically the coronavirus obviously forced several states to impose lockdowns in mid-March, uh, and this obviously led to mass in unemployment uh, in the United States. Um, so what is GDP? It's a key economic indicator of um, activity. Um, and this is the Atlanta Fed uh, GDP now, uh, basically, model. Um, and this is measuring, obviously, the total output of the economy um, as a result of traditional economic theory. And this is now suggesting that we're going to see negative 53.8% uh, annualized GDP. Um, so this is obviously an, a horrendous figure. And obviously there's talks of where, whether you should annualize a figure um, just because if we are pricing in that uh, V-shaped recovery in the economy, um, then we're unlikely to see a number this bad. But this is what um, a federal uh, model from uh, the Fed of Atlanta is actually suggesting, which is obviously diabolical. Obviously, we saw the jobs report, um, which was a complete surprise. Um, so we saw 25 million jobs created uh, in, in America in May. Uh, and the forecast was for a loss of minus 7 million uh, by most Wall Street economists uh, and those predicting the figure. But really, uh, obviously, Trump came out, was like, jobs, 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 you know, I'm the best. The stock market's rallying. The job situation's amazing. We created 25 million jobs in the economy in light of this pandemic and everything else going on. Uh, but this chart really suggests the reality of it. Uh, and millions of people are still out of work. Um, and just because we, you know, lost, we made, sorry, created 25 million jobs in the month of May, this does not, this is not representative of the real damage uh, of the economy. And this, this chart uh, suggests this. Um, more than 40 million people have filed for unemployment benefits um, as a result of this. Um, and as we can see over a longer time frame, average hourly wages you know, have really not kept up with inflation and they've really done nothing. So they actually, the average person um, is not benefiting from, you know, their, their wages going up. Uh, and then if you overlaid the stock market to this, you know, there would be a huge disparity between what the average person is really making in terms of their net worth, their wages and things like that, and actually how the stock market has just been booming. Um, so the kind of, upward figure you see uh, in the chart. And this is really the, you know, the quite worrying, quite sad thing about this chart is um, you think, oh, wow, you know, wages are going up incredibly just recently. But what this is actually is, is removing the lowest paid jobs uh, from the economy as a result of the coronavirus. So I think uh, retail, leisure, um, you know, the casinos, hotels, all those, you know, really, uh, I don't want to say unskilled labor, but um, those that, you know, maybe do not require a university degree have actually been removed from this figure. So then you see the average hourly wage uh, go up dramatically. 
Um, so this obviously is showing that the people that actually suffered the most from the coronavirus, you know, they're not the, the tech developers at Amazon, you know, they're not the CFOs. These are the people that are earning minimum wage uh, or something like that. They were unable to work, you know, fueling this kind of bad feeling of ra raising uh, and rising inequality uh, in America. But the Dow has surged uh, since the March recovery. Um, and obviously, this is feeding equity holders. Um, the unemployment rate, 14.7 was a reading in April and May um, was 13.3. You know, and while uh, people may be celebrating and in, in light of all these um, riots uh, in response to George Floyd's uh, murder um, by the policeman, you know, people are celebrating this, but actually the racial disparities remain. Um, black unemployment has remained virtually unchanged um, and this has actually increased uh, in May while the unemployment uh, figure went down. 19.6 million jobs are still gone. Uh, obviously, 2.5 million jobs coming back. That's not insignificant. Uh, but March and April saw 1.4 million and 20.7 million decreases in uh, employment re re retrospectively. So um, that means that 19.6 million have still not come back into work. Uh, hospitality and leisure jobs uh, gained uh, 1.2 million, but there's still a 35% jobless rate. Um, and the un unemployment rate, uh, whatever you think about that figure that came out, creating 25 million jobs that took so many people by surprise. You know, there's something fishy going on there, whatever it is. Uh, and the unemployment rate uh, is, in my opinion, definitely higher uh, than it appears. Jobless claims probably are understating the true level of job, lo job losses. They don't include uh, pandemic uh, unemployment assistance, and they don't include the mass numbers of uh, workers that were forced to retire. And the African-American economic uh, gap rem remains despite the US expansion. Um, and this is the kind of argument is how can senators in America who have a median net worth of around 1.76 million empathize with the struggles of everyday people uh, that have a median net worth of 97,000? Um, and this is a net worth figure not a salary okay so this is what you know the total assets uh of people are so how is it pr uh, even possible for them to basically uh suggest and kind of empathize with people uh if their income and their net worth is so much higher so how can you make money in the stock market so this is flipping from the economics uh to the stock market so you can make money uh, by investing in an equity uh, either by capital appreciation uh, or dividends. So dividends are essentially this fixed income stream uh, that gets paid out by uh, by companies to equity holders. Uh, and this may attract more uh, equity investors uh, into this um, into this company, then thus f fueling even more uh, capital appreciation. So what is this capital appreciation? It's essentially when a stock market, when a stock price goes up, the stock market goes up. This is the prospect of the business growing, uh, generating more earnings and the share price increasing. Um, so perhaps you can sell uh, this stock to a, another buyer uh, at a higher price. Uh, and this is why private companies go public for this more, you know, this greater access uh, to capital. And companies realize this, uh, you know, in the 1940s or 50s, that you can grow a lot faster um, with outside investments. Um, and this is why these companies have started to go up, uh, go public, sorry. Um, and this is what we're seeing now is software companies uh, surpassing expectations in terms of their IPOs and things like that. Uh, and this really is a beauty contest. Um, so what's the difference between exchanges and indices that you may ask from a stock market, you know, London Stock Exchange, New York Stock Exchange. Um, the stock index uh, is a gauge essentially to read the whole market of a, or a sector. Uh, the stock exchange is where you buy and sell stocks, bonds and other securities um, that are listed on various exchanges. Um, so what, is, what are these ind indices? These are a collection of different share prices weighted by price, market cap uh, or equally weighted. Um, and what does a stock market really do? It encourages people uh, to invest in new ideas, right? Um, but potentially risky ones like Zoom, Google, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon. Um, so this is the problem. 
So the stock market was originally um, meant to create wealth for average investors. But really what we see is, um, you know, huge institutional investors and high net worth individuals holding these equities uh, and obviously really benefiting um, from the price appreciation, whereas average people do not have access to these equities. Of course, they have access, but whether they have the means uh, to buy into it uh, is another story. Um, so in terms of the stock market and why we've seen this rally, 20% of these indices is weighted with the tech names and growth stocks and the lowest skilled labor, um, they don't get a look in. Um, so without the kind of investment in the poorest neighborhoods, encouraging equality in the boardrooms, all of this prosperity is concentrated with the skilled labor. So the people either working for the company or the high net worth individuals or institutional investors um, that can own these types of equities. So um, this rebound has really been driven by, you, you all know the names, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, A Amazon. Um, and they've been able to grow even when the economy doesn't grow. Uh, and when the economy does grow, they grow even faster. Um, so Netflix and Amazon are people that have actually, uh, actually benefited from this pandemic. When people are locked in, they buy more, they stream more. Um, and the reason we're seeing these stock markets rise, uh, or one of the reasons, is that tech giants make up such a high proportion uh, of these stock market indices that they tend to have an outsized effect uh, on the broader market. Uh, the stock market, a glorified beauty contest. So this is um, something put to, um, put to the, you know, the economic theory of um, John Maynard Keynes saying, you know, you shouldn't, um, this is from newspapers where they used to literally uh, say vote for, you know, whoever you think um, is the most beautiful or pretty. Uh, and then they would put, collect all the results. And um, that's very different um, from saying, you know, who do you think everyone else thinks is very pretty or beautiful? Right. And really, that's a good reflection of the stock market. It's not about what company you think the best is the best from a value or a fundamental perspective. It's what do you think other people are going to invest in? Um, so you think of names like Zoom, uh, Amazon, you know that other people are looking at these names. Um, more recently, we've seen the bidding up of, you know, really troubled names like Hertz, um, Carnival Cruise Liners, think people like that that are now up 100%, 200%, obviously from very depressed levels originally. But people are piling into these, uh, talking about kind of retail investors because they know other people will be buying these types of things. Um, another reason uh, is the, the, you know, the thirst for yield. Um, and obviously this is the MSCI World Indexing showing that um, the stock market has recovered dramatically from that March 23rd um, bottom. Uh, and equities in this are denoted by the MSCI world, and they're trading around 20 times forward earnings, about 30% higher than their historical average. And in the US, obviously, this is from last week's video, 24 times, it's now around 25.5, 26 times with Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft leading the charge. So we've seen these work from uh, home trends, dominate, obviously, that we talked about, but global bond yields are trading around 350 bips, 3.5%, below their historical average. So the demand for credit funds also reveals this kind of hunger for yield among investors with short-term interest rates falling to around zero. So basically the spread that you can get between inequities, so the return, the yield um, between inequities versus bonds is much wider than usual. So if we look at the three-month performance, for example, treasuries are up 2.3%. Amazon is up 30%. And this is one of the reasons we're seeing a big disconnect uh, between markets and the economy. And lots of people like to, including myself, and this was obviously the case, um, blame the Fed. So that it's nearly doubled its treasury holdings uh, since July now to 4.13 trillion. Uh, the kind of balance sheet is nearly at 7.5 trillion, um, which is a huge amount. There's been record issuance in the corporate credit markets because they know they've got the Fed to backstop that. So if, if you're if you have anything to sell, it seems like the Fed uh, is going to buy. And I got a really interesting quote uh, from Jay Powell from October 23rd, 2012. I think we are actually at the point of encouraging risk taking. Investors really do understand now that we will be there to prevent uh, any serious losses. So <laughs> Jerome Powell said it himself in 20, 2012. 
um, he was encouraging risk taking. And now he's obviously the chair of the Fed. He's now encouraging this moral hazard where we've got these zombie companies that just want to um, uh, should be bankrupt. And now people are taking speculative bets because, you know, the Fed uh, are there and investors are ignoring this near term economic you know, turmoil. Uh, and opt- optimally, uh, opt- sorry, optimistically looking forward to uh, an expected recovery uh, and any wobble in that, you'll see the Fed uh, and any central banks around the world uh, willing to uh, backstop this. Um, and growth versus value is a theory and growth has outperformed value since the global financial crisis. What are these growth and value are two fundamental approaches in styles or stocks um, where uh, invest growth is bit where investors essentially seek companies that offer strong earnings growth, momentum, uh, while value uh, kind of investors seek stocks that appear to be undervalued. Uh, and growth stocks uh, have significantly, according to this chart, uh, outperformed value stocks over the last dec- uh, decade. And this is changing in the short term. More recently, we've seen cyclicals um, like airlines, casinos, cruise liners, banks um, really uh, outperforming over the last week or two weeks or so um, as this kind of rotation uh, flipped from those kind of growth names Uh, but this could be short term and I definitely think that um, the growth kind of beauty stock story uh, will return uh, with with a vengeance. Um, Record number of stocks are trading above their daily moving average. Um, What you know with record levels uh, of low downside protection. So what could possibly go wrong? Um, Earnings are awful, but that's okay. And if you actually remember um, the 2000 dot com bubble, you know, they were tech companies and internet companies were almost encouraged not to try and make a profit or turn a profit. Why? Because they should be reinvesting those earnings into growing so they could generate them in the future. And if you're an investor, depending on your time horizon, you didn't care because the capital appreciation of that stock uh, would go up, right? It would increase despite if they're uh, uh, generating earnings. And this is kind of eerily similar uh, to what we're seeing here. Valuations like we talked about uh, have reached the highest since 2000, the dot-com bubble. Um, but hedge funds are getting ready for another slump in stock markets. And they're kind of a bit uneasy about this surging prices and it does not reflecting uh, the economic uh, problems ahead. And some managers are fearing that equity investors uh, used to buying the dips um, that ended uh, in the March uh, sharp sell-off, and you think about how you know how vicious that sell-off was. You know, I think we're going to see this again in terms of the steepness uh, of the velocity um, of that sell-off if we do see it. Um, you know, in the future, and you know, many have become so uh, complacent about how quickly we can recover from this coronavirus, you know, and how effective these stimulus packages actually will be. Like we saw with the stimulus check, saving rates went up, but consumer expenditure uh, didn't increase, but that was the intended measure of the stimulus packages. Um, So they're kind of doubting this kind of um, stimulus uh, and whether this can be, uh, you know, maintained. Investors are also very greedy. The put call call ratio, a measurement that's widely used uh, by investors to gauge the overall mood of the market. Um, This is essentially heading back to 0.5. So a falling put call ratio uh, is bullish below 0.7 or approaching 0.5 is considered a bullish indicator. It means more calls are being uh, bought versus puts. Investors are also pumping record numbers, uh, 22.5 billion into US bond funds, um, shifting out of their money market accounts to riskier, more higher paying investments and flows are moving and migrating towards areas of Fed support, um, hence the demand for investment grade and high yield credit. Uh, And the yield of the Barclays US corporate IG index has returned to pre-pandemic levels of just under 2.5% from a March high of 4.5% last month. Investors have also plowed 4.3 billion into BlackRock's uh, LQD corporate bond fund, which is now inevitably uh, too uh, big to fail. So more investors are getting greedy uh, and reaching for this higher yield. So where are the funds putting their money? They're putting money. Uh, where are the flows going? They're going into money markets uh, year to date, but this uh, trend is starting to shift according um, to the kind of indicators that we'll look at if we build this holistic picture. Um, remember this chart from last week? Where is the smart money flowing? 
you know, they're selling uh, S&P, they're selling stocks and they're buying gold. So what are they scared of? And this is really the crux of the video. Why are stock markets rallying? You know, it is that they are scared of inflation. OK, so what is driving this market is fear. If you have a lot of cash, you know, what happens to your money if you have money in cash and you, there's assets? If let's say the stock market or real estate goes up, if you hold in cash, your money is now worth less. And when we're in this kind of irrational trend, you know, people start to follow uh, the crowds when they're scared. They don't care about fundamental valuations. They're chasing these growth earnings momentum stocks just so they don't, you know, essentially their their money doesn't become worthless. So with all this QE money printing, money literally being created out of thin air, being printed dig digitally, how do you preserve your capital if, you know, before you would hold it in cash? Um, you buy assets, right? And if this is the stock market, like real estate and stocks, um, but this is why you're seeing the so-called quote unquote smart money buying tips and gold. They are hugely scared of inflation uh, as a result of all of this quantitative easing. It's almost at the point of if Amazon was trading at 5,000, would you care? Maybe not. If the Nasdaq was at 10,000, would you care? Maybe not. OK, so this is what people are really scared of. And when the bubble bursts, you know, you can make your own mind up where we are in this kind of stages of a bubble. You know, we could be in this kind of bull trap um, where really uh, the economic reality and stock markets um, are completely disconnected. Uh, and we're just seeing, um, you know, huge greed taking over. And this is really the reasons uh, why the stock market is rallying, in my opinion. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video and gave you some things to think about. Uh, please leave your comments down below, like and subscribe this video um, and to the channel. Uh, and if you like this kind of longer style, uh, definitely leave your comments down below. Thank you. Have a good weekend and take care.